Beats. Villainous Beats. Uh, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name, is super black In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name, is super black uh, Imagine that, a future that's super black Long as your skin brown, your superpowers intact what would your powers be? Just hope it ain't super whack Spatial manipulation, create a portal that's black Maybe just super speed, time travel to run it back Or cheat manipulation to keep my spirit intact As I encounter evils the world face Demons the world makes, I'm needed the world to stay Rest in peace to Chad, what they killed all the Black Panthers Told us white lies, I still marvel at black answers Suits in D.C., pray it lead to a civil war It ain't no Justice League, what's the need to be civil for? Propel like the juggernaut, it's clear ain't no stopping this. The world in grave danger, who can stop the apocalypse? They killed all the heroes, the new ones don't really care But if you need me, put your fist up in the air Yeah, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name, is super black In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name of Super Black. Hey, everybody, we are back again. It's a Tuesday evening. It's a little after eight. And uh, guess what? You got another episode of Blur's Eye View live in your studio, in your bedroom, apparently in your bathroom, and everywhere else you can watch us live on YouTube. Listen to us everywhere you listen to your podcast. And, so much more. Show your love on the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Without further ado, we got a small crew today. We got a small crew today because, you know, life is lifing. We got a couple sick ones and, and, and you know, and in, in Lady Mandalore's case, Janelle Monet's in town. So it's very much understandable. Stay off her back else you got to deal with me. You think she's the problem. There's a reason why I'm the captain. Uh, but without further ado, let's get this started because our engineer's in the building. Black Spartan, what's going on? If it's not you, if it's not, if it ain't Will, if it ain't Kira, it ain't Laney, we have to continue this tradition of making me break before I come on here. It happens <laughs> because I'm an influence. I <laughs> yeah, that's fair I'm, enough. You are I'm, an influence. I'm an influence, so, you know, <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. Um, fair but, uh, <laughs> what's going on, man? Oh, I, I'm good. I was married now, so yes, yeah. congratulations. Uh, <laughs> yes, congratulations. She, I'm newly I'm, married. She owns, she owns me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm our a very good. own, our very own uh, shepherd book, our uh, our uh, uh, I guess our sensei of mm -hmm. the waters, <laughs> Navy Montel. <laughs> With the poles, not, uh, not with the poles. <laughs> yo, I was inspired by Spartan because I saw one of his workout videos on IG, and let me tell you, this boy's in like click, click. Oh, it's nothing. I'm sitting there like, what language is that? I'm again I'm gonna do my dear, and he puts it back. I'm going, bro, that was three of me, and he lifted it like it was nothing. Can I get I, some pocky, please? Because I'm not going to gain... I, I'm not I getting into shape. Telling people Forget it. He, I keep Ooh. telling people he's the engineer of the ship. He lifts warp drives, warp drive engines for a living. I'm not kidding. I'm extremely rusty. <laughs> <laughs> rusty. The lies you tell. Hey, you, see, you hear this, Ted? You see we got to deal with this, right? <laughs> Every week we deal with this. You see this, bro? No, but congratulations oh. on the nuptials, my friend. Congrats. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Please do better than me. <laughs> Please. I beg yeah. of you. Please do better than me. <laughs> so so. I, I got to say real quick, I was at Anime USA, so I got to see, you know, meet up with my boy Substantial and the crew up in there, but mm -hmm. I got to meet Shingo 2. Okay. Let me tell you, that is one of the humblest cats in the world. Yo. Shingo showed us so much love. At BlurCon. He's always shown his love, number mm -hmm. one. But he showed us so much love because when we did our first live panel, he was he was front and center. And he came up and he was just like, I will join in 
on this conversation <laughs> on the on this trivia, and I'm like, have at it. I, was, <laughs> I didn't even know he was that blurry, but I was like, because you know, because when you see him, he's a very he's he's a very thin Asian man. So mm-hmm. when you hear him on Battle Cry, his voice and his body don't always match. It, it throws. But it has he has that charisma and oh such a humble dude. I swear that was that was my uh that was my Beyonce moment as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> not, not the Beyonce moment, bro. Real quick, uh, uh, real quick about Beyonce. <laughs> uh and and, and 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 sidebar beehive, it's not me. I'm telling you now, I'm for you. I'm all for you. Don't, I'm don't riding come, don't come for us. It, don't it's come not for us. might go for everybody else, but it I love Deja I have, that was it. I I have watched because this tour is everything. It's mm-hmm. it's all over everybody's timeline. All right, but there's a section when she's doing the song. She, there's a section when they're supposed to shut up. They're supposed to. You notice how I said shut up? I didn't say mute. I said <laughs> shut up. There's a part in the song you're supposed to shut up, and and you're it's it's time. Mm-hmm. I have seen several, several except for Houston and Atlanta. Congratulations, Uh-oh. y'all got it right. Um, that's because that's Houston's where she's from. It's like yeah. she'll burn the city down, Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. They know better. Come on now. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, there's been several several places where the tour has taken place and they don't shut up. There's sections yeah. of the of the of the <laughs> I should say yeah. they don't shut up. And mm-hmm. and but it's but when you see us, mm-hmm. it, it's oh we are we shushed up. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, it's so it's solo Sundays in the church. We shut up. <laughs> don't don't worry, Chloe. Too. Don't worry, Chloe. There's no there's no slander. I have there's no, no slander here. There's no I slander. I like I like me. Yeah, I like me. We, we want no smoke. I, with me now don't now I pay people don't come for me. I like the older Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Those were the songs that I really enjoyed, like Signs and Daddy and you know Dangerous Love. Those are the ones I I grapple to. Right. Nothing okay. what she's doing now, but. This is for See. y'all. <laughs> See, she was at the ATL. <laughs> we <Sit>. won. <laughs> <laughs> now we won. I want. I want to bring in a special guest w- with us tonight. Before we get further in our conversation, yes. uh, he's been, he's a friend of the show. He's been on the show before. Uh, he's an awesome dude. This dude is uh, Arthur. He's a creative. He is the Alpha and Omega. Uh, he has written Zosma and Twenty Fifty Z, which dope book by the way so you need to get on that uh <laughs> but he's got a new one called the arrival which is the continuing adventures of these characters jason michael primrose what's going hey! on jason hey! How's it going? i'm going to do this proper like so we're going to give you this right now Uh, I've loved everything <laughs> you put out there. Your energy is positive. You speak positivity. You have this book. You have these books. Let's mm-hmm. put this out there that are are amazing. These, these these stories are amazing. Like I can literally put myself in this world. <laughs> so it's it's so it's great to see this stuff and to see you continue it on. And every post that Jason has made, I'm just like, if I don't put this up. He's gonna come after me, <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously. If I don't put this up, I'll, I'll I will be doing myself in the blur community a disservice because what he's putting out there is just what we talk about. It's what mm-hmm. we are always all about. Is what everything that we talk about. So we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But man, Jason, other than finding time to promote and and tour and write, what else have you been on? Um, you know, I want to I want to talk about the the sharing part. Because I think it's something, and I've I've been meaning to make a post about this. I'm very touch and go with my reels. Yeah. But this is something that's going to be coming out soon. So I'm going to say it here first. I need everyone to take that 10 to 15 minutes, scroll your timeline, and reshare the reels and the posts that your fellow creator friends are putting out there. Mm -hmm. Comment on them. I don't get it. When we have a community of hundreds of creators mm-hmm. and you go by somebody's post and they only have 30 likes and two comments. 
That's well, it's easy to put a fire emoji down at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how long does it take to put a little heart, a little kissy, a little, a little lightning Maybe. bolt, a little punch? Mm -hmm. Like, a, hey, I'm excited about this. And to me, it's just so easy to press the arrow and then, like, type in a little tag button. Sure. You don't have to say anything. You just put it out there. Sure. Just share it. It's yeah, it, costs, it costs nothing to, to, to show support. It's cost <laughs> we, and we know how the algorithm works. It feeds on oh, yeah. the So yeah. and, and our and our try and our and our mantra around here is F the algorithm. It's so, <laughs> so true. So I, I really try to just leave something and I'll find myself doing the pass by like, oh I can't do that. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. I gotta go back and like leave a little something for somebody. Because when someone else comes to that post and they see there's energy there, then they'll be more likely to engage. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. way. So I just, I want, I really want people to think about that because it really means a lot when I see, uh, you know, you sharing on, on Facebook oh, yeah. and, and your stories and everything. And I just, you know, I really appreciate it. So um, wait, wait, somebody, uh, my second in command's in the, in the building somewhere. Uh, she's in between oh. sets, I guess. Uh, here we go. Here <laughs> we go. Lady Mandalore. <laughs> here we go. It she's begins. Muted. She can't I'm talk so because there's music going on right now. Well, of yeah, there's music we going can't on. Hear so. you. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to sidebar because I really am going to want to hear how the concert is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> it was like when she said, "Like, oh, uh, I won't make it." She was like, "Shit!" And I'm like, "I'm like, what's wrong?" She's like, "It's Janelle Monae." And I'm like, "Well, that's a hard ass." I can't be mad at that, but that's when you see that's when you see Kira really shine because now she is in told she's in she's in her element. Oh, 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 social Kira has came out. <laughs> Kira has came out. And she okay. is enjoying life right now. She oh, really? Really? Okay. And she pulled out the beverage to, with, with the, the pinky. pinky. With the pinky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you see, everybody, what happens when you when I do the live? You guys won't get to see none of this action up up front and personal. Like, why not? So I'm mm -hmm. glad she's doing that. I'm glad yes. when she said Janelle Monet, and I was just like, I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> And have some fun, have some fun for all of us. You're right. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna be on with uh -oh. us. We're we're gonna she just be heard on. something. She just yeah. heard something. We're uh -oh. we're gonna be on uh we're gonna be on uh well, I wonder what she's singing. Can we guess what she's singing? She's singing hot. She ain't she gonna be stingy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> wow. You better have your voice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you better have your voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh my god! Bye, Kira. See you later, Bye. Bye. <laughs> just open, just open, uh, open that you realize right next, you realize <laughs> next time we come together, she's gonna be an absolute mess. There is nothing. Oh yeah, we're we're, we're doing we're doing what the shit tomorrow. We're doing Family Feud, so I I'm, I'm gonna tell her. I'm like, you better have your voice. Uh, for ready for tomorrow. <laughs> Very much. Oh my god! So, but like you say, Jason, um, it does. It doesn't cost anything to share. We we have so many uh, mm. POC creatives out here who are putting out fantastic work. Fantastic. Just, yep. And and there's no reason why you can't share it. a link, a Kickstarter link, uh, a post that they've done. It costs nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and we talk yeah. about it all the time. Yeah. You, you, you can create all you want, <laughs> but you got to get people to see what you created for it to even have any type of relevance. Yeah. It, it's that's important because creatives out here are putting in the work, but the attention is going to the wrong elements. They're going to the wrong properties. Mm -hmm. They're going to the wrong faces. And I said this before: not all, no, all creatives are not creative equal. There you go. At the same time, word of mouth is the strongest form of advertising. That part. It's right. all that part. word of mouth. You got it, Demetrius. You already know what it is. That part. Yep. Uh -oh. Cheer. Talk about it. Elspon said it. <laughs> Cheer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he knows yes, exactly. yes. I'm really excited to have you all on to talk about Blurred Station because I really want to get that out there too. Yes. Um, I see 
he's in here always obviously sharing um, his work and, and everything he's up to as Kickstarters and things like that. So um, I think, so you said, what, I've been, what have I been up to? So I made an interesting life change. Um, in November of last year, I moved to Portugal. Nice. Um, oh, show yeah. off. Okay. I see how no, this works. Okay. Um, like whatever, but mm -hmm. it's much cheaper to live here than it is in the United States. Um, wow. A friend of mine moved back to Portugal. So, and I've been there. So I, I see why you're there. That place yeah. is amazing. Oh my gosh. Man, Let me stop. I'm jealous. What is I'm, I'm what having navy memories here. Sorry. I'm having navy memories. My apologies. Oh wow. Sorry. Yeah, they, yeah, they have a yeah, they have a base here. Um, so <laughs> I did that. I did I, I was in LA before and I came mm -hmm. here because I needed to ease the tension. Like I needed to ease the stress of like finances, creativity, the whole hierarchy of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go a place where I could just create and like that was it. It didn't have to become anything else. Um, really? He was in was the Azores? First. Really? You were in the Azores? The <laughs> islands Azores. before you get <laughs> to Europe? It's like, how you doing? It's Azores. Okay. Nice. Um, you got to come back, Demetrius. Um, <laughs> it's like homecoming. Um, so I did that. Uh, and I feel like it's really opened me back up to creating again. In a way that I felt really stifled when I was at home. Um, I'm working a whole full time job. People probably think I don't work is the way I post. <laughs> a whole full time consulting position. Um, so I work. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not funding the Kickstarter for you to pay for my Europe experience. <laughs> 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 that shit. Like seriously. Sorry. Oh no, not at all. No, no. no. But um, hmm. people think that and. And you know they do. So I'm like, let me just clear it up. You know, so I work a whole full-time job um, in addition to uh, creating. And it's going back to the stuff I was doing before, which is like branding, brand strategy, marketing, stuff like that. So nice. That's what I, I, I've seen. So if those who don't know, I've, Jason's been on the show before. I've said it several times. Um, but, you know, many people who have been on the show, they are attached to us for life like that's just what it is they need support they look at us mm -hmm. and so i've seen jason with these posts and i'm just like this man is living life and takes some of the dopest headshots i'm trying to figure out <laughs> <laughs> it was like just living just i'm like just, I'm like, he didn't have to go this hard. It's, it's lights just, and angles. Lights, lights and angles. And angles and lights everything. and angles. Work the hair. <laughs> Work the hair. But, but like, why can't we just why can't we just live like that? You know what yeah. I mean? That even when I think about being here, mm -hmm. my dad was stationed overseas. Mm -hmm. But um, thinking about like where we where, where my family or where our families are generations, you know, back. And I mean I couldn't have imagined this. I wouldn't have imagined this even five years ago. I would. I wouldn't have even imagined this like two years ago. Like the mm. let alone you know ten years ago or fifteen years ago when I was a kid. So I think that I kind of I kind of feel like it's it's part of my exit. Like part of my life's work is to show abundance to like live. And abundance and and want people to like now mm -hmm. you're coming back and you're like I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to Portugal the next year <laughs> and all the stuff and see how it's changed and um I think it's important and there's also a big big black community here from, mm. from look at that the whole entire mm -hmm. family is gonna be there in another year or two uh before yeah. we go on I'm gonna take a commercial break we're gonna come <laughs> back with Jason and we're gonna talk about uh the arrival this this new this new link he had this new project he has just this guy is busy i'm mm -hmm. telling you it, but it's a good busy i like the good busy so we'll be right back hey, I was eating. What commercial? hi there this is a commercial break this is your reminder to peep the podcast on all platforms and drop them a follow and these are some more popular episodes that you can go ahead and check out after this one. 
Okay, I think I bought them enough time for whatever they're doing behind me. Cut it, Chris. I'm going back to my damn sandwich. We are back. <laughs> Y'all gone at Jafari. He even did the bumper from Dragon Con. Yo, that was <laughs> phenomenal. I saw that blue stool. I said, I don't believe you did this <laughs> from Dragon Con. And he ain't about to tell me that I would help him. Look, we, he yeah. went so the Jafari went ahead and shot some of the shots for me. I mm-hmm. said, Well, send them to me. I'll, I'll do the rest, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. there you have it. Uh, like you know, we don't play over here. We we consistently work. <laughs> See, <you> know, like, <laughs> so far as I got eight and one to change. Oh, got it, man. Come I'm on, ready. <laughs> this one, I'm ready. It'll work. Mm-hmm. So, Jason, 2050C Zosma, your mm-hmm. rival. Let's talk about the arrival. Okay. So, comic books. Love always, 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 always love comic books, but never made one before. So, you know, I was kind of existing within, oh, I got to get you the Kane and White cover. Oh, oh God. Oh, go. uh. So I've been watching everybody, right? And learning and listening, Comics 101, like, how do you do this thing? And it's a whole new format. And so instead of starting with a new story, I started with an adaptation of the prologue. But in novels, you can only write from one character's perspective. Otherwise, it gets really confusing. Mm -hmm. So with the comic, you get to see more than just what Alistair knows. You get to see what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And this is how the apocalypse begins. Mm -hmm. And so you're really seeing what the catalyst is for what happens in 2050Z. And... This is just one comic. All of the origin characters are going to have a comic that frame out what happens before you get to 2050Z. So like next to be Florence <clears throat> and every character experiences a major disaster that basically leads to the apocalypse. Um, so yeah, so that this is the beginning. The arrival is the catalyst. And then there's all these other stories that happen before and after that follow each of the individual characters and they'll all be in comic book format. Um, so I'm kind of taking a pause on writing the novels right now to give people the visuals and the color and even though the rivals black and white, but give people the visuals and that kind of like cinematic experience. Hmm. Um, hmm. Yeah, which is super exciting. Nice. And, it, and just That's just amazing. the black and whites alone. That oh, is wow. gorgeous. I love the detail. Yes, detail I'm, a, I'm a sucker for. I'm like you, Spartan. I'm a sucker for detail. When it, when it, <laughs> Lay, it's layout for me because layout is a big part a big component of telling the story even on a particular page it's how those panels are laid that lets you decide if you're going to just which would you're going to focus in on i'm i'm huge on that been that way for mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. goodness there's, all, there's always a flow to it and you can tell when it's come certain comics and and um <clears throat> And Mike, you probably knows as well. You've seen it, and I've seen it in your comics where it's always got to be a flow where your eyes will always go to the next scene and the next scene and the next scene. And there's not a break, it is like a flowing story. And I yeah. love seeing comics like that. So when I Same. saw yours, I was like, oh, I like that. I need to go read, I need to go back. I'm behind. I'm probably the, I'm probably the worst. <laughs> worst. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm more behind than you. So don't know. So you're ahead of me. Chris, why well, I can't even touch that brother right there? And Jason wrote it. So where I am I? Stay on the pulse. <laughs> well, the important part about this this comic is that for anyone who's ever heard of Lost Children of Andromeda mm-hmm. and knew that a seven hundred page book was too much for them, you can start with the arrival. It's going to oh. give you. It's a full nice. story, right? It's a beginning, middle, and end. It's going to give you everything you need to want to know more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really important, which is why the all the different character stories will kind of you'll see cameos and 
and you'll reference different things that happen in other comics in, in the other one. So, um, and, and, and honestly, I have a lot of crossover with a lot of my fellow amazing uh, BIPOC creators. Mm -hmm. And I just, I felt like it was time to enter, um, enter this format. Um, and then, and so, yeah. I've got bags and boards ready. That's all I got. <laughs> I've got bags and boards ready. I've, I've got a box to put it in. Let's go. I have... This is what I love about mm -hmm. our, our BIPOC community in speculative fiction and horror and just <laughs> generally, bless you, mm -hmm. and just generally world building. Mm -hmm. I've seen, not just on this platform, but on other platforms, uh, uh, many creatives poc creatives who have created these worlds is not just baseline characters and everything they are building worlds and this is what i can appreciate mm -hmm. with what you've done mm -hmm. jason is you're building world you just described it perfectly that we're going to go back and we're going to go build around a prologue and we're going to give it to you in comic form so now not only are you getting a novel you're getting a comic. Mm -hmm. Is is a mong is a is an anime or a live action? And we've talked about this with 2050Z. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have. Yeah, you know, Demetri Demetrius, Demetrius knows. What I'm <laughs> I knew <laughs> me and him. Me and him. I'm telling you, always on promotion. I, think. I was thinking the same <laughs> thing though. <laughs> It needs to be available on a certain station, you know. Yes, it um, <laughs> feel, feels in the building, feel what the heck's going on. Uh, do you see this as a live action? Is Philip going to come on with you when you come on? The I, I got to find out because uh, live for you. I I'm mean, if it feels available right now, I can shoot oh. him the link. <laughs> no, but no, because the thing is, I was talking to I was talking to Brandy Blocker. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, she, so. Dear, dear, dear friend, love, love, yes. love, love, Brandy. We DM every day. We're just always cutting up in the DMs. She's a mess. <laughs> a beautiful mess. She's a beautiful uh, mess, exactly. <laughs> so we were talking about, I was like, okay, I want to hear more about it. Like, you know, you got to come on, uh, get crazy at the grade on there, you know, and I want us to have, you know, a nice like four person discussion about <laughs> no one. So, um, so that's why I scheduled all these lives and I've got you coming on. So if you want to invite some folks, I will go ahead and get, get that invite pop and say, hey, come hey, live. let me know, Phil, Demetrius, I know whatever you yeah, schedule allows, let me know. I, we can do, we can make it happen yeah. because, uh, for those who don't know, who have been living under a rock blurred's eye view, the entire crew is also part of blurred station and we will be bringing a new News Network. Uh, the Blurred News Network will be coming soon to the Blurred Station. So shout out to Kevin Murphy, Demetrius Holt, Phil. It's a bunch of people that we can't name right now uh, due to the strike. But the, yeah, he said it. He's saying it right there. He's saying it. The family is strong here. Yes. This is the affinity. Is the affinity. Yes. Yeah. When I read the, because I, I went to the website and I read it, I was like, oh, they know what they're doing. It's Because, you know, I spent the last year and a half two years actually in like mm -hmm. nfts and you're talking about i mean it was a, it's ridiculous but yeah mm -hmm. the, the whole prospect of ownership right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. watching um people like black sands now i think even uh, <laughs> creator uh stop <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I tried i tried i tried <laughs> I was Don't gone it. i almost had it i was keeping it in i failed i looked at chris we wow. chris, we chris broke, yeah. I broke i broke, wow. <laughs> oh, broke I broke. but Zero but i'm talking about day. it's the aries in me i'm sorry sometimes no. <laughs> That's some bull. Okay. <laughs> That's some bull. Like, I, I broke everybody. Look at this. <laughs> so, please. We're oh talking my about God. Raising, raising money <laughs> for the community to support us being, you know, it, uh, enterprise level. <laughs> Demetrius is not helping, man. Demetrius no, is mean. not helping. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> about this stuff. Okay. We, apologize. we apologize so much. What? When we oh, were in um it. When we were in LA for that MGM Studios event, mm -hmm. I met someone who worked in reality TV and I said, You gotta make a reality TV show about blurts. Mm -hmm. It would be so good. You don't even know what you're missing. That this is me right here. 
Yeah. That would be dope. Me right here. But anyway, um, I see Lost Children as a live action. I do prefer animation myself. Okay. I love Castlevania. Yes. Nice. Uh, nice. Um, Miles Mor- like both the Spider Man movies. Um, I loved uh, the sorry Spider Verse movies. I loved um, <laughs> what else? Uh, I mean, I watch so much of that stuff. X Men, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this one I also liked. All the League of Legends animatics. Okay. Yeah. 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 All those. Um, and there was another show I watched that was actually based off the of Dungeons and Dragons like role play uh, that came out. I think it was on Netflix. Critical uh, Role. Critical Role. Yeah, I think that is good. It is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vox Machina. Yeah, Vox Machina. Yeah, Vox Machina. Vox Machina. Vox Machina. Vox Machina. Yes, I'm a critter, so I know. <laughs> oh. So good. Thank you, Travis. Um. So yeah, so that's that's like where I would kind of my heart lies. I think you can do a lot more. With, with animation and I just feel like right now live action in that genre is getting really unless it's like Dune level mm, like okay yeah Dune mm. level cinematic because there's a lot of like environments and stuff mm-hmm. and, like, or there's a lot of technology advanced technology um, there's like you can go from cyberpunk to complete post apocalyptic to um, you know complete dystopian you know um so there's all these different kind of landscapes, and uh, and so I think if it was um, something that was like really story driven with mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of good action, but didn't follow that same formula of like big fight at the end, mm. uh, same special effects, um, I think that it would be better as an animation, and, and it could be episodic too, which I think yeah. would be better. I think this okay. it says a lot when you, and I agree. I can agree with the with the animation part because you mentioned the Spider-Verse movies and you couldn't honestly you couldn't pull that off live action. The story that they're telling, it's 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 damn near impossible to pull that level of of action and easter eggs and everything is it's hard to pull that off. It's right. really hard to pull that off. Yeah, so, really- I think in a, in a certain I think in certain narratives, animation is best. Yeah. In certain yeah. in certain narratives, uh, animation's and, and, best for conveying emotion and just creating a mood, mm-hmm. creating an environment. Especially if it's a if it's a heated discussion between two characters, and animation can let body language tell more before the character even speaks. And that's why I'm such a fan of anime because you get that from that. So to see that in animation would be phenomenal. There's more storytelling with body language than there is with, you know, with dialogue. And there's also no limitation. You see, that's the that's the one thing about it. That's the one thing about animation. There's not a limit on what you're expressing, Mm -hmm. what you're doing or what you're trying to convey or how big you want to go in the landscape or how small you want to go in the landscape. That's that that right there is the big difference. So I can see why, Jason, you would want to consider that uh, for your for your stories, just because you know, if you're trying to do on a brand telling stage, that's really the best way to go about it. And like I said before, there's not a limit on what you can do. Yeah, like Young Justice is another example, or any of the DC EU yeah. movies, um, DC AU movies. But um, yeah, so that's kind of where my head is. That's why I went co- comic book, so that you know, as a as a black creator. Um, my imagination or my ideas like don't carry the same weight. So maybe someone else that doesn't look like me could walk into some place and be like, I have an idea for something. And someone's like, oh yeah, we'll pay for it. But I need to show you physically like what it looks like. And then they're like, oh, this is actually like really good. Oh, maybe <laughs> well, blah, blah, blah. So I feel like we have to present our ideas. Um, they have to be physically presented, created, manifested, fully formed before yeah. we get consideration um, which is why, yeah. So I, I think, yeah, that's my belief. I think that's the, and and here's a shameless plug. <laughs> uh, I think that's the beauty of what you know, with us being a part of Blurred Station and and the path that they're taking is allowing a lot of BIPOC creators to bring something to the table mm-hmm. and and show their projects and say, I need to try to get this off the ground. Number one. Or I want to get this put into an animation, number two. Or I would like to see this as a live action, number three. And this is something that all our 
cohorts are doing, you know, trying to, you know, make this happen and make this reality, you know, because what we don't get to see a lot of is, and when we do see it, it's not enough. And we right. always mm -hmm. want more or it's watered down because of the networks or it's watered down because where or some some random streaming service, you know, and it gets taken away from the original creator. Now, granted, there's going to be some changes I get. But when you take something and you can completely flip it on its head or you mm -hmm. or it, it performs well beyond what that network expects but it performs well how that creator wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And then it gets snatched away. Lovecraft Country. Perfect example. That hurt my heart when we found out that HBO <sighs> said they were not going to green line another season. I said, why would you throw money away? You know why? I know why. I mean, I know the obvious answer, but that was more rhetorical because it 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 made more sense. Every week, their viewership increased. They put more mm -hmm. eyes on their product by this particular property. It created conversations. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well two, well, two parts of that. Number one, it created conversations. Number two, it is said what we have always known. If you give people of color the ability to create, run, and direct the show, it is more successful than they give them credit for. And when it mm -hmm. catches the white, and when and when they don't expect it, that's what you know. <laughs> When they don't expect it to succeed, then they're like, oh, oh, what 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 do we do? What do we do? What do we do? People mm -hmm. are watching this. Do, do we yeah. want them to watch this? Do we want that? No, let's cancel it. That let's cancel it. You know, they, they freak out. They mm -hmm. literally freak out just because they don't give when they don't give the opportunities, they can sit there and say, Well, it's because we let y'all run with it. It was terrible. But when it's great, which we have seen what? We've seen nine home runs in nine different people in mm -hmm. nine different projects. And it is amazing that now you would think that the door, well, because of the strike, but places like Blur Station are giving, keep giving people go the ability to sit there and go, we're going to let you guys run with it because mm -hmm. we know what you can do given the time and the platform. So that's the reason why, that's the reason why I know, I know I'm going to keep beating a dead horse here, but expecting places outside of blur station to do what they're allowing folks to do yeah still a pipe dream yeah because they mm -hmm. will never they will never accept success when it's not from them if it's not homegrown if it's not something that they've marketed or created they won't accept it but when it's original and it comes from a person that's passionate about it creative about it and has the drive to do it they want to kill it because it's not their idea mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I have, I agree with you. And um, one of the big things that I don't know if you read about what happened after Lovecraft when they released the proposed storyline for season two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> you know, what I notice is that you have to. Um, Let's just say that like the structure of entertainment that exists in Hollywood, it takes a lot of energy to maintain. You, it takes a lot to keep that level of like uh, creativity funneled into those specific you know buckets. And so, I think the fact that we've only had two black Pan films like Black Panther, mm -hmm. out, the fact that we only have one Lovecraft Country, even though there's like a ton of really great black sci-fi. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantasy. Um, you know, we have Children of Blood and Bone coming out, but that's been through its own drama of switching studios. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Paramount or something. I don't even know, but I remember reading about that, and and I learned more about the option game. But to me, Lovecraft Country was really a you can't have this. It was a. It mm. was a. Um, where this is going is going to shift perspectives and because media is so powerful. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think they were really afraid of what the white audience was going to feel about where the story was going to go when it came to black people being powerful, being more powerful than the white people on the show. This redrawn map of the United States based on things that they erased or this power structure that shifted mm -hmm. and 
you need to get permission to tell those kind of stories. And if you don't have it, they're going to make sure that you can't. Um, and that's why I think independent networks and media is going to be so important um, to be black one and black. Yeah. They haven't beat me too. And I was about to say Watchmen and American Gods. That yes. Watchmen yes. and American Gods are two examples, Jason, of what you just mentioned. Just because uh, I love Orlando Jones because I <laughs> that was <laughs> that man. number one. That was that man. Writing, and I loved it. And number two, it's like you said, the whole idea of it all is you hit the nail on the head where it's like they don't want to expect, and this just goes to tell you what their demographic is. Their demographic, and, and I had to tell somebody this, their demographic was never us. Their demographic was basically telling, uh, was basically trying to tell a fragment of our story to uh, the, the, the rice cake warriors. Let's just call them what they are. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> wait, 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 you mean the rings of paper? You mean the yeah, rings of paper, paper, right? African Americans, you know, the ones I'm talking about. They were, they were basically trying to tell a worn out <laughs> version of our story to them. So it's mm -hmm. amazing when you see an American guy, you saw Orlando Jones come out, and he was just a scene stealer in everything that he did. Um, but they couldn't handle it because it started to be a little too truthful. Watchmen, same way. It started to be a little bit too truthful. And so people were getting a little worried, which again just goes to show you what are you so worried about? And again, it was, they, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, it wasn't that they couldn't handle it, is that they couldn't control it. That you see, once you once you're you have someone who can tell a story, Orlando is Mr. <laughs> Nancy. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. out of every character in American Guys captivated the audiences because from the beginning he made it known. That he was unapologetic about who he was going to portray. Mm -hmm. He was unapologetic about the story he was going to tell and the presence he was going to convey. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Lovecraft Country. They touch genres that traditionally black folk do not do in media, in theater, science mm -hmm. fiction, the occult, supernatural, mm -hmm. all types of lore, all types of mythology. Ad adventure, sci-fi. They, they tap all it. of it. And, and based off of a person who is historically racist, xenophobic. Let's go, <laughs> come on. Made him turn in his grave. Just ah, la, 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 la. Black folk telling my story. Because yeah. Lovecraftian lore was all, I mean, mind you, I, I enjoy Lovecraftian lore. Mm -hmm. I don't like the creator. But when right. you take a, take a property <laughs> that is not traditionally Part see, I'm trying to laugh because Don it's Demetrius, man. And it's told from the perspective of people that are just as creative, just as as mm -hmm. as uh bright and, and articulate as anybody else. Oh, there's a control problem on the table. I mm -hmm. mean, Bob, John, and Franklin cannot control what's being told by the black folks because guess what? We could tell the story just as well as you. Even and people want to hear it. Black Panther, they expected that to fail. Yep. It's the only Marvel movie that is that's won Oscars. The only one. Mm -hmm. Really? Talk about it. Talk about it. This goes. Okay. Oh no, go, 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 go. Like, so what are no, y'all scared I'm of? Say, because that, that was the year. So I, I I've been writing my books for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh that movie, because I saw it in February 2018. That movie was the, I mean, the reason I really published the books. I, I was thinking that it would work, like I, that I could, but that movie solidified that there was an audience for the types of stories I was writing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people, if you take that plus all the things that happened after, um, were emboldened to create because they were like, oh no, like we can't have this be the end mm -hmm. of our presentation positively mm -hmm. and entertainment and you know where it came from oh hey jay hey uh phil i went ahead and shot you the link over phil on on ig so whenever you can oh here uh, come phil ladies and gentlemen it, it's it's, about it's a party over here it's about to be church but, but no, it's, it's a party it's, over here i'm gonna go be you got, the Jason, you got it right though <laughs> really because it, it, like you said it, it's black panther along with others out there they just really, they, like I said, it, all, it always comes back to exposure. It's mm -hmm. like, that has always been the big thing. Nope. It's like, no one knows. And it's, and it's sad because we have social media. 
I mean, people are sharing anything that happens in Hollywood versus anything that happens down your street. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing the number of 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 POCs, authors, artists, writers, uh, writers, creators, collaborators, such as yourselves. And it's just like you find out by accident because, well, mostly by accident because you'll pop up on somebody's uh, front page, you'll pop mm-hmm. up on somebody's link, you'll pop up. You you may be mentioned on someone else's uh, media page, and mm-hmm. that's why we keep saying all, the whole entire time. And you say yourself, when you came on here. We have to learn to bow the algorithm, mm-hmm. where it's like, like you said, you can put out here. It's like, hey, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got time and salvation. I have, uh, I have the Andromeda Project. I have, you know, this, that, and the other. You know, and you're putting this out there for us to read. It's like, oh, cool. But like you said. If only a handful of us doing that, if only a handful of us are doing this, and everybody mm-hmm. else being like, "Wow, oh, that's nice," right? It's it's <laughs> that's yeah. the part where I'm just like, but you are the same ones that are screaming about variety and choices and saying, "Why are there more of us?" But You're see, the same he, ones. Yeah. That, see, but see, that is that's where you see oh, them John become Street. their true selves. That's when you see them show genuinely what's more important Mm -hmm. because you have platforms like blur station that are coming out here to create to present a platform for creators to say unapologetically create what you do make that magic tell that story Mm -hmm. and these are the same people who say well why don't we have enough this they always gravitate towards the drama that's already been established Mm -hmm. and they don't want to let go of it because they're familiar with it so when you have platforms that are coming out here like blur station who are trying to bring the truth and the creativity to where it's supposed to be and to be shared and to be enjoyed. Oh, it becomes a threat. Oh, this is, this is uncomfortable. I, I can't be a part of this. Yes, you can. Yeah. Just stop giving your dollars and your attention to people who really don't give a crap about you. Much. Yeah. I mean, so I, I spent, um, I've been doing branding for a, a while, uh, probably like 13 years, 14 years now. And one of the things we always talk about, uh, is trust. Like how much trust does the audience have in what you're doing? Mm-hmm. And when I think about something like a blurred station or think about Netflix um, or, or um, oh my God, what's the one? I think it was called, oh, it got acquired by Paramount, CBS, Pluto, Pluto TV. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. How did they build their audience? They built their audience on nostalgia. Mm -hmm. So Netflix had access to shows and movies that you couldn't watch anywhere else. Yeah. Um, Pluto really had stuff that nobody else would license, but it's like whatever, whatever, whatever it was. But that's how they built their. But it was it was like free. It was it was just you could just watch anything. Mm -hmm. So when I think about Blur Station, it's like how do you get that forefront thing? That's going to to help, or, or that or that groundswell of of creators and properties that are going to really help solidify that trust in the platform and the type of content, the quality content that 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 will be created. Um, that's one part, and the other part, going back to what we talked about earlier about sharing content, engaging with people's content. I get it. I remember when I posted that I had finished my first book. No one said anything. Right. I remember when I posted a fake cover of me on um, Vogue. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And you, the comments, it -hmm. wasn't even real. Mm -hmm. Comments were crazy, like over 100. We got it. We got a special guest with us. Phil J. Jr. of 9B Collecting is in the building. <laughs> Phil's back. What's going on, man? Oh, told you, it's hey, a family everybody. affair over here. This is the barbecue. This is where it all happens. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Phil? What's up, Phil? Nothing much. I was just hanging out. So I was like, I might as well join you guys and talk for a little bit before I got to go back to work. This is good work. It's good work. This is work. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't... I, 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 I'm literally tired before I do this show, and I'm just like, mm, time to go to work. Time to go to nine work. to five, nine to five job. I'm just like, yeah. that's, that's why you have Red Bull. <laughs> you Red overrated. Bull. How dare you, sir? That is overrated. <laughs> Red, Red Bull saves lives. 
so I think um, it's it's fair to say, and, and like you were saying, Jason, it's fair to say that you know, and we all agree. Like when mm -hmm. you see products, when you see projects like Lovecraft Country and Watchmen, and and the the conversations that were started up just mm -hmm. behind certain little nuggets mm -hmm. of information, you know, and even talking to people that even I work with that are older than me, and saying, "Hey, I've known about." The Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre. I've known about it for years, but they hadn't. You know, and, you know, we're in an age now where it's just like, okay, you have information readily accessible. Oh, that eye opener! That mm. eye, that eye opener after the show, after that first episode, that first episode, what was that number one Google search? Mm. The number one Google search was Tulsa massacre, and that yep. so many people are like, that actually happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, oh, the that, number the number one search is is the Tulsa massacre real? Yeah, that was that literally was it, and people were like, "Oh, it's real. That's crazy." Um, and it's crazy that it took that. I think that even what was the other show? Was it Watchmen? Was Watchmen it, did was it that, like Watchmen. was that? Yeah, yeah. Watchmen did it too. So Watchmen, Watchmen kind of Watchmen kind of laced it. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, Lovecraft, yeah. Was, was like, that was the first episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the first yeah. episode. Yeah, they yeah, came yeah. in with a sledgehammer. We're gonna we're gonna hit you. We're gonna hit you in the face. I think it's one of those things where it's difficult because I think what I learned over even over the last like with pandemic and politically and everything over the last like however many years now, because it just blurs together, right? It does. It just it really does. Where I'm just like, I don't even know what's going on right now. Um, but I think that what I did learn is that education is very important. So education is very important and the lack of education or the means to getting the truth um, is detrimental. And the reason why it is, is because it, everyone doesn't, will never agree. Like, you know, you could stand up right now and say, I wish that everyone got along and everyone was happy. And somebody would be like, no, I don't agree. Like, right. Like mm -hmm. someone would, someone will always disagree, mm -hmm. but the key to agreeing or being able to find a path forward is always going to be education and everybody being on the same page. And what we have in this country that's very difficult is we're all on different pages trying to have the same conversation mm -hmm. and we'll never be able to have that conversation. Meaning if I talk to you and I start talking about systemic racism and you don't know about redlining and you don't know about Tulsa, you, mm -hmm. then we're literally having, we're going to argue because we're going to mm -hmm. have a different conversation yeah. from the very uh -huh. beginning because your formative yep. information is based off of a lack of facts or facts that I have. And so it's like, hey, all of these things happen. Now what do we do about them? Like you've been literally living on top of falseness or you've been living on top of ignorance, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, and that's not to say that everyone has all the answers. It's just in any conversation you have, there's going to be a point where you split off because you either don't have enough information to continue or every everyone's not educated in the same way. And I think that that's been something that's been really difficult to try to steer conversations is like everybody on social media wants to have a conversation, but I'm like, can we have that conversation? Like this conversation is a waste of time, right? That right so there. That's the part is that everybody wants to talk, but I'm just like, hey, like, I don't, you know, like. And that's kind of, that's been the most frustrating part is like the, the most ignorant voice in the room being, being the loudest. I think <laughs> that really bothers me, but like, it's the one where it's like, hey, did you think like, you know, we're talking about women's rights right now. So should you be talking louder than the women in the room? Maybe not. Like, like, <laughs> or, like it's like, it's, right. it's very difficult to get, but it used to be where I think it was just without social media there was decorum, right? Like someone that's out in the middle of a field that never knows anything about neuroscience wouldn't step into a conversation about neuroscience or like, or, or newer physicists or whatever. They wouldn't step into that conversation and then start talking. They mm -hmm. would just know that that was inappropriate. But now it's like, everybody's just like, oh yeah, I saw that one time on TikTok. So let me just give my opinion. It's like, shut up. Like, what are you talking about? Like, like why are you in this conversation? What, what, did, Ty, what did Tyson say? Social media made y'all, made a lot of you guys uh, very unafraid of getting punched in the mouth. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just appropriateness. It's like, if you went to a friend of a friend's funeral, right? Like you don't even know them. If the family isn't falling out and balling out of control, like just lo losing it, neither should you. But right now, we're we literally live in a place to where you don't even know this person, and you're rolling down the aisles and saying how much they meant to you. Like it's like, why are you doing that? It's so inappropriate, and that's where we are on every level: education, yeah. entertainment. You just have people just popping in and just thinking like the thing is to talk. And I'm like, do you are you educated enough to talk in this? I'm not even calling you stupid. I'm just saying, do you know anything about this subject that you're? <laughs> 
emotionally yeah. like rattling off about like probably yeah. not that's the part that's been really difficult and so i've wait i've saved a lot of energy by recognizing the conversations that i'm in where i'm just like okay let's have a conversation and it's very quick you're very quick to be able to be like oh this is going to be a waste of time or <laughs> this yeah. is going to be a draining thing where i have to spend so much time explaining everything before we can even talk about what we were going to talk about right oh, yeah you yeah. have to have yeah. that 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 level of sensibility uh number one to mm -hmm. even step into those rooms and think like you know it's funny you mentioned the women's rights thing and it was just like oh no these women shouldn't do that and i'm like i'm sorry but aren't you like a 75 year old man that has no ovaries whatsoever <laughs> your time has come and gone <laughs> you are the gandalf we didn't want <laughs> i was gonna sit there and i was gonna be worse i was gonna sit there and say when is your expiration date shouldn't it be up by now <laughs> i mean at a certain point i just wish people understood there was appropriateness just the appropriateness of being like okay who's talking who's qualified am i in that range probably mm -hmm. not but people don't know how to self-edit anymore they don't like they don't there's like almost zero accountability. So you can just step into something and just feel like you can talk and you can go off on your soapbox or whatever and then just disappear and leave. And I'm just like, what is that? Like, why do you feel like that was a necessary thing to do? You mm -hmm. know you, I like, mm -hmm. I can see it in your eyes. You know you don't know. So just shut the fuck up. Like, just shut up. <laughs> well, we, like reward, <laughs> we reward radical opinionism. I mean, our system rewards radical opinionism so yeah. um, mm -hmm. social media does People that are literally encouraged to be as outrageous as possible in exchange for whatever that comes with which is mm -hmm. really like popularity sensationalism shares likes comments i mean and again going back to what we were talking about before it's like yeah. mm -hmm. we could be creating really positive powerful content for the community that really shows us as heroes that shows us as um abundant you know, Afrofuturism, all that. And you'd rather go like this post that talks about like how, I don't know, how unfair Hollywood is, you know? It's just like, why are we like, so, okay, yes. And we, there's stuff here that's being made that doesn't have anything to do with that. And yet it's like not enough. So I, I, always, they, chalk, I always chalk it up like this. You could put out, a, you could put out a grand storytelling of people of color that would rival the level of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It would get 10 likes. If I sat there and said the next season of Real Housewives of Atlanta was coming out, instant blackout. <laughs> and, and I would be one of them. I'm sorry. I really and I, 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 I'm not. Like I'm, you, I'm, you I'm lost say this. There, yeah. Well, thank you for admitting that at least. <laughs> no, I mean, so. He's not after the housewives. They're I'm, not, I'm not trying to. I'm not, it is nonfiction material. Okay. Every everybody has their everybody has their own fiction. I know because I follow wrestling. It's so man. It's a man so proper. I get Same. it. Same. Yeah, yeah. Same. So, but I, but I, but I'm pointing it out. It's just that you can see that number one, it's our attention, and number two, it's the machine. And that the machine will drive whatever is the bigger money driver. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing that even now that we're seeing more, we're seeing a lot more, a lot more authors and writers and and movie makers are getting a lot more shy now just because, well, A, opportunity, B, the pandemic, because the pandemic really changed the landscape on a lot of things. And may have actually increased that ability of, of creativity among us at the same time you we're seeing that the fact that you're not seeing failure that's the thing i take away from that you're not mm. really seeing failure you're actually seeing the number of people increase mm. and that the emergence. stories yeah. increase none of them are the same all of them are unique all of them are intriguing at the same time there's a plan behind everything that right there is the difference. That there's planning, there's mind of ownership, there's there's care, there's passion behind it. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. There's love behind it. Yeah, there's love behind it. So that's why, like I said, I'm not trying to knock, I'm not knocking the ratchet shows. The ratchet shows will be there mm -hmm. till the end of time. I've accepted that in life. 
But at the same time, <laughs> I Flavor of Love, season 25. You know, Flavor Flav is not going to go down easy, okay? <laughs> that, that dude's like Keith Richards. He ain't going to die. <laughs> he ain't going to die. <laughs> this man will outlive us all. But, um, uh, but no, that's the point I'm getting at. It's just that, you know, that's the reason why I keep saying it has to be, it really has to be us that, that, pushes others forward we have to get them that exposure we have to get uh others like jason and others like phil and others like oh phil twice uh, <laughs> phil, phil dipped off twice uh, but it but creators such as yourselves we have to get them push them forward and say this is what these guys are doing and if you saw what they're doing that's the big thing it's almost like going back to cons it's like when people realize there are black cons like mm. Blur Con, like uh, uh, J One Con, and I, I mean, and I keep going down the road here, oh, but when you, <laughs> really, much really, I'm even gonna... at the Janelle Monae concert, she, she still, still has still the fire up rounds, and I love it. <laughs> still doing shots from Janelle Monae, but I still want a picture, Kira. But um, <laughs> put that bazooka back in your purse and enjoy the concert, okay? <laughs> right. But that's but that's just it. It's just the whole idea of just I like the fact that we're seeing more of that now. But mm -hmm. it is, but it is upon us to keep pushing that out there forward. And you know, until we either until AI finally dies, which that's never going to happen, we have to we have to be our word of mouth. We have to be our biggest. We have to be our biggest advertisement for those that are doing exactly. Um, why that that showing off their talent for the world to see is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I have a question for for both Phil and Jason. With the world of speculative fiction coming from the BIPOC community, do you see a, a wave, a new generation of creatives, creatives of color, uh, coming forward and saying, you know what, there's a story I've always wanted to tell, or there's a story I've always wanted to write or draw, or becoming more re uh, relevant and being seen. Mm. He's muted, Phil. You're muted, Phil. Oh, Phil, Phil oh, unmute me. yourself, sir. Hold on. There we go. Hey, there Doggone it, Phil. <laughs> it started off with some really big words, and I was like, oh, no, I don't know if I'm going to answer this. <laughs> My brain just started going, no, no, no. <laughs> he said juxtaposition. No, I was like, oh, did he? Yes. Me, sir. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I think uh, I do see things getting better. I guess, I guess what I see is I see things getting more... Um, specific um which has mm. been kind of cool like so it's not just enough to diversify something or to add in people for no reason they're saying like i want to see a filipino episodic with a little boy going on an adventure in the philippines like they want to see that they don't want to see like oh and just throw in the little filipino boy in this random like place that doesn't make any sense like they want to see more specificity and so I feel like content wise, what you're getting right now is behind the scenes is creativity in that way, where mm -hmm. we're going to see some specific projects coming out that may not cater to everyone. It might cater to a specific group or it's it's inviting people to come into that group to actually learn something. So I always relate this the same way as uh, like when Beyonce did Homecoming. I related to the same thing. She put it out. If you don't know why they're moving that way, look it up. If you don't know why the music sounds cool, look it up. If you don't know why the band is playing, like, it's like she didn't explain it. It's just like, here's my art. Here's this thing. I'm paying tribute to this thing. And then that's the way art should be, right? It's not a specific, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to handheld, you know, handhold you. Um, because that's not the way the world works, at least especially I know for Black people. Mm. We are integrated in the world right away to where we have to emote and empathize with people that don't look like us. We have to do that and be ourselves, right? Whereas a lot of people have the benefit of not having to do that. They can literally just go through the world and not empathize with anyone that doesn't look like them. Matter of fact, it's a muscle that they don't use, which is why we have such a, a hard time, right? Which is why, because they, they don't everything if everything caters to you you don't have to use that muscle you don't have to be like oh this this video game character doesn't look like me but i can understand their story and their plight anyway it's like they panic and freak out like why doesn't it look like me right it's like it's that mm -hmm. thing um whereas we have it the opposite way so right now i think content or i hate that word but i i think <laughs> art 
like the way it's used. That's the way it like the, yeah. the, the art that we're doing now, I think is getting a lot more specific. That's not to say that there aren't still problems. It's highly problematic, <laughs> but it's getting better. Or at least I'm starting to see some, some you know, in the, in the optimism of it all. I'm seeing oh, it. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, think- by, by the way, uh, congratulations uh, for those who don't know. Uh, you were one of the designers for Blue Beetle. Oh, yes. Ooh, oh, yeah. So. <laughs> yes, last time we talked, we couldn't say anything about yeah, it. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I I guess, the end. I'm like, you could have said something. You know? he, he, stopped, he stopped himself. <laughs> that should have been a dead giveaway when he stopped himself in that last. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you see NDA come into play. It's like, what is that? It says, nigga, don't ask. I, I pulled a full blown Mitch. McConnell. Exactly what it was. <laughs> that was the quickest. That was the quickest all stop on record. That was <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, right from the hip hop. I heard screeching that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about you, Jay? Um, it's interesting to hear from Phil's perspective because uh, you're so deep into that system and how it works, and it is so gate kept. Like it's so gate kept. Very. Um, yeah. I feel like I've been interfacing a lot with ind- independent comic community. So in the three or four year, the three years I say since like 2000, really 2020 was when people started to congeal. Everyone started to become aware of each other because of social media, because of the, the lockdown. And then people really started to create um, more courageously because they saw a lot of their other things go away. Um, so I saw this first generation and then now I'm starting to see that because those people have stepped out, there are younger generations that say, oh, I wanna make a comic book now. There was a young man who reached out to me two and a half years ago and he just crowdfunded his comic. Hmm. And it took him that long to make it, but he did not stop. And I remember when he went, he was, wasn't working. He went and got a job, he was working at like Chick-fil-A and he was paying for those pages. And I was like, that's real. And man, then Lucy, yeah, from man. Dream Free Comics, he just posted that his daughter is in a film contest. And so I started thinking, I'm like, well, what if Newton hadn't started writing um, uh, Crescent City Monsters. Like, what if he had a mm. new, Would she have felt as empowered to go forward in film mm. and, and to be encouraged and to be connected, right? Because Newton has relationships now that he probably was able to, you know, to like, it, it works faster. Yeah. So I think what we're seeing is the access open, whether it be within Hollywood, it's opening smaller. But I think in the independent landscape, the access is opening, number one, from technology, number two, from the number of people that are kind of in it, uh, who can provide mentorship to those um, others that are coming up. And um, I think it's really beautiful to see. And people are telling stories that they want to read. So it's really not feeding a market. Or I should, I want to say too, I want to add, because Jason just brought up something that's really important that's kind of subliminal under the scenes, which is the thing that he's kind of touching on is that the power or at least the the ability to get your story out there has shifted to where you don't have to wait for the big studio, mm-hmm. like, or, or they're not always in control. Right now, what we saw because of the writer strike and everything else, right, is a the system has failed meaning streaming all of the like all the way that that they do business currently does not work right it's not working uh people are struggling like everything the cost of living and everything has gone up and yet wages haven't increased to the point where you like it balances itself so Mm -hmm. you also have everybody saying like oh to watch this show i gotta do another 9.99 or 4.99 or so like like just for one show or whatever, right? So it's like splitting everything up has caused this big, big thing, but it's also made it to where when you're creating your own show or your content stuff, the audience has shifted to watching what they actually want to see, meaning they're no longer is easily tricked. So they'll be like, we're going to put out this crappy movie that we did last year. And people are like, great, I'm not going to watch it. Like they don't care, right? <laughs> but if they see something they actually want, 
they're like, I'm going to go over there. So it's interesting because the audience has shifted to a point where they're not paying attention or they're not easily fooled anymore. So they do want to see diverse content, whether or not the studio decides to do it or not, they'll just keep being behind until they realize it makes money. And that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Uh, but that was a good mm -hmm. point because I completely forgot about that segment of it, which is we all talk about the entertainment, entertainment industry at large in terms of like the systems that are in play and all of the big things, but we forget that that also has been on such shaky ground that the audience, the general public has moved on. They've actually mm -hmm. decided to do this. People got a lot of stuff at home now. So even going to the movies now is like a, mm. you know, like some people want to go and then yeah. other people like, or they're just like, at bare minimum, you'll be like, I must see that in the theater or I'll wait till that comes home. We didn't have that option years ago where it was just like, you go to the theater or you're you waiting to go year or months to see whatever that movie was, right? So with options comes choice. Um, and I think that that's changed the landscape landscape of content or what we're putting out, basically. And, and that's why yeah. you, that's why you come over to Blur Station. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Come over to Blur Station. We are signing up people. Come to and subscribe. And we are trying to get to 100,000 uh, subscribers at the end of October. I mean. And uh, we will be getting beginning begin uh pre-production on many shows including the blurred news network uh and the undead horizon down by jarell and his his family his daughter and her makeup skills <laughs> she got a future Ooh, she got a absolutely future. she got a future and then so bless you no kid should be that freaking talented <laughs> <laughs> That kid is talented. Uh, but yeah, come over to Blur Station. You sign up to the Affinity thing. You all Affinity uh, program. You also get a chance to own a piece of the action, which you can't uh -huh. get at these other services. So after 36 months, guess what? You own a piece of the company and you uh -huh. get to play and see yeah. stuff that you like. And you don't get stuff canceled that you like. You you actually get to see which is incredible. Can yeah. can I can I also say as as and at one time this was not a title I was proud of as the older blurred in the in the room. Um, one of the biggest things I was always particular about growing up is history, mm -hmm. because I knew I wanted to have a family. I knew I was going to have children. I've got kids and grandkids, and as I've gotten older. I've won something left behind for them. So when my time is done and I decide to step behind the curtain, when they come forth, they can see that there is a plethora of talent and passion already established. And that means more to me than anything. And right now we're at a precipice. Mm -hmm. Most people are still trying to live up the role of being a lemming. Oh, they like this. I'm going to like this, too. Oh, they like that. I'm going to watch that, too. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Where is your investment? Where is your commitment? Who are you committing to? Are you committing to the companies and the studios out here that don't care about anything but what's in your wallet? Or are you going to create, be a part of a legacy and a history that will be there? Because there's some people who don't want us to succeed. It's it's still an ongoing thing. They do not want us melanated creators to succeed. Artists, writers, musicians, you name it. They want us to fail so they can say, ha ha, you couldn't do it. Right. But as a father, but as a father and a grandfather, I don't want that. So this investment, especially in Blurred Station, is important mm -hmm. in our authors, in our artists, and our filmmakers, our makeup artists, our cosplayers, comic book art, all of this, it's important. Because there was a time where I couldn't see anybody who looked like me that did the things that I loved. Yeah. Hell, I got into a fight at nine years old reading a Black Panther comic on my grandmother's porch. <laughs> I lost, but I still got that book, though. <laughs> 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 that's me. He's like, that's neither here nor there. The point is, uh... <laughs> the point is, ow. The point is, <laughs> but 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 the thing is though, aside from that, I'm I'm with Blur Station not only because of that, but the big part that everybody keeps saying, and Chris has said, it, ownership. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, what it's like, what you know, once you shuffle off this mortal coil, if you will, what is left? What is your what's your legacy? As 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 Navy said, what's your legacy? What are you leaving behind? 
Do you want to sit there and say that, yes, me, along with a handful of others, decided to breathe life into something that's going to outlive us all, that's going to be a that's going to be a shining beacon for others to come and say, what they tell you no, we're going to be like, come on in. We, we going to treat, you know, we keep on saying how, we keep on saying how our podcast is the cookout. That right there is the, uh, that is the grand all fish fry annual reunion where they got to bring the, the elderly on the nursing home type of thing. What I'm getting at is just that that's the part where that's going to be the legacy. That's going to be the part of it. It's going to be where you own something that's going to have value. Of course, it's going to have value. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's going to be like like Navy said, it's history. It's going to be like when my kids are going to be wondering, you know, you know, they're going to be sitting there telling their kids, hopefully, you know, we have this or, you know, turn on, turn on, turn on Blur Station, who by now has bought out Disney or is, or is <laughs> done, you know, done this or done that. The fact that we can sit there and say decades from now, that something that everybody has has invested in, not just monetary, but but invest themselves and their creativity in. That's the big thing I'm getting at. It's like, right. it's almost I don't want to compare it to Motown, but it's close. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. Motown. Motown in itself, no no shade to that entire history behind Motown and Detroit and Hitsville, USA. That is a micro universe in itself. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is the same thing can happen with Blur Station as well. Because the big thing about it is we can say that we own something. Yes. Demetrius says it perfect right here. He says you get a stock in a company that will have more than one station. Mm -hmm. More than one station as Blur Station will be the first. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jason, your book, The Arrival, that link went live today, correct? It did. Um, the you can still sign up for pre launch, we're going live okay. tomorrow. Live tomorrow, okay. So, here's the link for that. Sorry, I, was, I was slick on Amazon. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, was, I was slick on Amazon buying, buying book one and book two, so that's why I was like. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go you want to go check the you want to go check out and, and get the pre-launch for the arrival you definitely want to go back and get 2050z and zazma and lost children of, of a drama this series <laughs> oh, it's such a groundbreaking series for me uh i i love the world building because i got 2050z when he first came onto the show and literally sat back and got it and just was sucked in um it's amazing i i can i can really get in when the when the book is more descriptive in its words and you can see yourself mm -hmm. you've got me mm -hmm. you know it's it's one thing to be like a child and you're reading captain america and you emulate and you want to be captain america but it's not us you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know it, it's 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 the effect that Black Panther had. That that global phenomenon of seeing young kids have that emotion and have that feeling and see someone that looked like them on screen, you know, and then to read to read 2050Z and to see this story open up a whole new world of characters and power sets. And a fight that you can actually see and feel. Mm -hmm. I, I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. So, you. so, so, can I, can I ask Jason the question, please? <laughs> because this has been on my mind since the minute we came on. I knew he was going to be on here. So, when were we going to be a part of the audio book, sir? <laughs> sir, <laughs> when were we going to be part of the audio book? Okay, because um, the thing. So. Um, I got wasted vocal talents. I want to put them to work. I'm going to put it to work for a blood it. creator, dog. Go. Let's go. So um, we actually worked with a production company to record a lot of the book. And because, you know, I'm extra extravagant. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're saying? I want to, like, invest in my own extravagance. So, um, so we recorded every single individual character. Nice. Um, because I wanted to do a cinematic audiobook because I can't do anything regular. <laughs> so, we're still working on that. It's, it's, it's taking some time, but we're actually the whole book is recorded. 
-hmm. it's really about figuring out how to like splice in the different voices and finding the budget to like pay for the post-production mm -hmm. um but we had oh, amazing, amazing talent. When these these auditions came in, and I was crying because of how well they did. Uh, Tashi, who's actually here, she's she's in it, um, and I just yeah, I'm I'm excited to bring that to life. But I think it's something that won't be appreciated until the series has more, you know, more notoriety. And I want to talk about the arrival quickly because. The thing that's really important about that story is that at the baseline, it's a father-son story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we open with in the beginning is a scene where uh, Patrick knows something that Alistair doesn't know. Something's coming. And he's trying to navigate his son's fear as he navigates this like cosmic, larger than this world event on its way. Um, and so when we were making the comic and, and doing the art and the panels, it was really about going back and forth between this, like the intimacy and, uh, really nurturing relationship between specifically like a black father and son. And then these larger than life visuals, like homage to, I love disaster movies to things like deep impact. And, um, you'll even see in some of the scene grabs, it's like, Deep Impact or uh, 2012, like, or us, um, um, oh, the one with Nicolas Cage, and it was about numbers. No, uh, next. Was, or next or knowing? The, knowing, knowing. Knowing. It was knowing. 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 Okay. It yeah, yeah. comes and like burns up everything. So mm -hmm. there's, there's that kind of back and forth. So there's a lot of personality. You really get to see Alistair's emotions, which I thought found was really important. And he's seven in the story. Um, and so I, I really come, came to really fall in love with uh, the visuals did the work that my words normally do, which was cool. Um, really cool to see. And uh, I think you really start to like love Alistair in that, in that moment. And I felt that was really important that people love Alistair because when you, when you love a character that much, and you look at other care other people in the real world that look like them, you mm. associate, you know, like Harry Potter or Percy Jackson or any of those types of people. Um, they can do no wrong. And imagine if we had a, just an army of characters like Alistair, who people just cherished, you know. I am so gonna speed good. read these two books. <laughs> that part, I can't speed read. I'll just it'll it'll take me to the end of the year, but I do it. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I'm a get her done. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a speed reader, so I I just need a few. I just need a day. I want to take I, I want to take a break and and talk the news real quick, but I kind of don't want to get away from this conversation. <laughs> Because, <laughs> I mean, everything everything that the news is entailing really deals with this conversation in, in certain aspects, Pretty you much. know, and it, we'll just take a break. <laughs> I'll make I'll make a, a conscious decision. We'll be right back. <laughs> Do you like your pancakes padded? Your biscuits buttered, your cakes fluffy, then you should get Mother Butters. I put that on everything. Pasta, veggies, rice, and everything nice. Mother Butters will get you right. Oh yeah, GMO free, and for those who are vegan, Mother Butters has a non-dairy option. That's right, there's enough Mother Butters for everyone to enjoy. Get Mother Butters from your local grocery store. Hey man! What you doing in my kitchen? All right, we are back. Uh, Tashi said it. 
Tashi said it. It's a good convo. It really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> what what don't we have at the table when we when we come on screen? Um, food. food. Uh, this is true. Uh, I have food. <laughs> see, now that, see, don't, like, oh God. Hey, you knew I was gonna eat. Like, look, <laughs> Jason knows what it is. He already knows what it is. <laughs> I can't with Jason right now, man. I can't. I can't. Look, he came on. I'm, here for, I'm here for it. I love okay. it. <laughs> Part of me. Look, oh man. He came on at a time where it was me, DC, and Brandy. And when I say Brandy is was known for eating like some noodles or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was like, I'm sorry, but you know, black folks gotta eat. And I was just like, <laughs> it's literally a rule. Sounds it about is right. A you right. Stay online and have, we will all be eating. At some right. Point. It, it just, that's just what we did. You know, <laughs> that's what we do here. So, <laughs> a little bit of the news. It, it just, just, just a tad because it, it really does kind of tap into what we're doing. Boy, here we go. The strike. Ooh. Yes. Oh. A conversation or a, a comment that was held in this conversation earlier talking about the strike. And it was by Demetrius. And he actually said, you know, now that the strike is over, how many of us is in that room? Mm. That's the question now. You know, um, once again, go to Blur Station. Won't mm-hmm. have to worry about that. Uh <laughs> invest, invest, invest. Invest. But in all reality, it is something that, you know, we were seeing, like you mentioned er- earlier, Phil, the landscape of entertainment had changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. You know, w- whether it was dealing with the pandemic and now dealing with the strike, not even what, two years out, mm-hmm. it's been bananas. And they've they've suffered for it. And, you know, they've they've they have they have suffered for not having content, not being able to promote content, not being able to keep content in the theater mm-hmm. three months plus. You know, now they're the dynamic of what they had changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, five billion. <laughs> five my golden billion parachute off. turned into a a, 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 a bronze anchor. It was far. It, 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 is, it is the <laughs> drums of <laughs> liberation. <laughs> It is the drugs delivery. I just did a quick look up. That, yeah, they said, uh, yeah, economic impact since the strike uh, by it ending today, uh, theoretically ending today, would have would have put that the entertainment industry has lost six billion since the strike started. See, as Cat Williams would say, shouldn't have been talking shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ain't that the truth? <laughs> so. I mean, it, it, it just it goes to show you that there is power in numbers. Number one, there's power in the right people in the right collectives to mm-hmm. make those changes. And we needed those changes because let's face it, when this happened, we started hearing about a lot of behind the scenes stuff of VFX workers were getting getting shafted like movies suffered. There were movies that mm-hmm. suffered, time. you know, because of overwork. Uh, companies, overworked people. I've never heard of working somewhere seven days a week in 16 hour days. That's what insane. God. That what was God. the that was the game industry. And we're gonna talk about uh Blizzard Activision and what they did and yeah. everybody in that whole thing. <laughs> Vi- uh, video games suffered big time. So oh yeah, yeah it was coming around. It was and coming it, around. This seemed, this seemed to be the year, this seemed to be the season of strikes. Mm-hmm. Everybody was striking. It it started the writers started to strike, the actors went on strike, uh, the yeah, auto the workers are on strike, UPS <laughs> <laughs> went on strike, <laughs> I'm like, went on strike, nurses went on strike, everybody. On strike. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, did, did Luffy get a hold of everybody? I'm like, man, that, man, that joy boy was kicking in everywhere, <laughs> y'all. Joy boy was everywhere. <laughs> so it, I mean, it needed it needed to be done, it really did need to be done. You know, watching movies and television, and you I've heard about residuals before, mm-hmm. but then when you hear about them from the early 90s, you know, and or late 80s, and then you hear about them now, you're just like, wait a minute, 
you get yeah. paid. Wait a minute. And, and knowing that the TV land, the TV landscape alone is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a problem. Like there is no more. I'm going to run this show. And then after seven, eight, seven to ten seasons, it ends. But then it goes to TNT yeah. or, or or WGN or something like that. And mm-hmm. still get a good residual check off of that. No, no, no. No, now they're streaming. There is no more. That was that was their strategy was a, from the beginning. They yeah. didn't want to pay oh, the creators. They didn't want to pay the actors or anyone who had to do with those productions anymore mm-hmm. because it was taken out of their pockets. Like they have their steak and caviar and the yachts and all the other stuff. $78,000 so a day. Yeah. <laughs> so they thought they were being slick, but what they end up doing is scuttling themselves because, oh, yeah, you can go that direction for so long. What's being what's being created in the meantime? Because the general public gets bored. Mm-hmm. Seeing the mm-hmm. same thing over and over, they're going to get tired. They're going to just say, "Hey, what the hell?" And it was only a matter of time. So, Bob in the in the boardroom, good for you. Bob. You fucked around and found Bob. out. Bob. But the music, the, the music industry was first, right? Wasn't yeah. The music industry yeah. First? yeah. Same thing. Yeah. They basically squeeze everybody out to the point where artists can't make money if they don't go on tour. Pretty so much. You, you make it. It's like they have to squeeze like every little ounce mm-hmm. of creative ex- expression, spirit, energy, and and mm-hmm. the margin is still low for the the person putting everything out. K-pop and it really, really high for the people that own the brand, the IP, everything. So mm-hmm. you know, I think the the challenge that. I didn't realize about um, like iTunes and Spotify and all of the, the, because that was what around the time like Netflix came about. Yeah. Yes. It's been yeah. around now. Nobody was listening to the musicians when they were complaining about it. And it's like that age old, if you know, they came for this, they came for the, I don't remember the saying, but it's something from like World War II. They came oh, for right. these people. I didn't say anything. They came for these people. I didn't uh-huh. say anything. They came for me. And yeah. it was like inevitable that streaming was going to impact the creative industry. And I think music just has had a really hard time. You know, it doesn't have as much organization. There's, I don't think there's unions really in there. And they and they really get taken advantage of a lot with the contracts and stuff like that. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I just... It was like inevitable when they change the model and they say, and it doesn't scale, you know, because no matter what, the more people that subscribe, it's just the more content you need, but it costs more money to produce that content. So there's not like Uber, when you order an Uber, mm-hmm. you gotta pay for the ride, you got to pay for the driver. Yeah. So yeah. 100 people order an Uber or 100,000 people order an Uber, you still got to pay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't these models I don't think like like you like like you were saying they're not proven out they're not proven to be successful because we're only ten years. 10, well, they're, years. they're not built. They're really not built for. They're not built as and this was this was kind of explained to me because I my my area in business is about as small as a McDonald's meal so I had to ask people. Uh, but the way it was explained to me was just that the way that these. Uh, industries work is that they're always top heavy but bottom but bottom empty which Mm -hmm. basically is which basically is which i thought was crazy just because these industries have designed plans that will forever keep them paid but at the same time everybody that's not of the stakeholder and the above are basically essential workers like Mm -hmm. we like when we talked about when we talked about the strike when it first happened I did not realize that writers, that writers in Hollywood and everywhere else were really not getting paid anything. No, no. I mean, not getting paid anything, not getting uh not getting benefits, not getting any residuals, royalty streams, things of that nature, weren't getting any of it. The big the, the basically the big wigs in the corporate office were collecting the money and they kept and it's amazing the mindset mm-hmm. of, the mindset of it all was what y'all complain about. I mean, you got so you got paid. What y'all complaining about? It's one of the like, biggest. Aren't you working in Hollywood? Isn't this what you wanted? The mm-hmm. funny thing is, a stereotype for years where you would see the big executives always living this lavish lifestyle, and you see the people underneath them just working for every little bit that they could. And it's it, it hadn't changed. It hadn't changed. 
but people just getting fed up because it's getting worse now more so than anything else. You want me to help you create content, but you're barely paying me enough to feed my family, keep a roof over my head or any other amenities, but you still want me to put in 12, 14, 16 hours yeah, just for the, you. But you're Come also, seeing, but like you talked about the VFX artists that Marvel, I mean, the, the horror stories that were coming from those artists from Marvel and saying, they were put under tremendous deadlines that they had to get this, they had to get that, work themselves sick, some almost in critical condition in some cases. And at the same time, there wasn't a safety net for these guys. When a lot of those movies, uh, be that as it may, how you may feel, maybe whether you like them or dislike them, were very heavy CGI VFX oriented. So that is why it's like it's amazing you would think that for all the love and care they say that goes into these movies are debatable, but the people behind them are literally getting sweatshops. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to compare it to Nike sweatshops, but it's damn near close. <laughs> you it can. really is. You can. It's, it's a safe space. Go for it. I swear, <laughs> Captain Captain leaves the quarters one second. He calls about sweatshops. What in the world? I mean, it's <laughs> That's your fault for leaving. Where we are is it's on every level, right? So it's like what's difficult is is just if you look at life in general, we've been talking about this, right? How the cost of living isn't hasn't increased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to where, like people are posting stuff like this is what a hundred dollars in groceries looks like right like just the mm -hmm. sheer amount of trying to survive and having a job like we've gotten to the point where you could have a full-time job even if it's minimum wage just say it's a minimum wage job and you're working full-time but you can't mm -hmm. afford to live anywhere that should never happen it should be to a point where it's set it's regulated to a point where it's like okay cost of living means even this person, this person that makes this much should be able to at least afford a one bedroom or a studio apartment and it not be a few thousand dollars just for that. Like, right, it's kind of crazy, right? So when you look at entertainment, the finesse there has been that somehow the people creating the thing are underneath the people that are paying for the thing or mm -hmm. have the, the thing, which is just a finesse to me. It doesn't make any sense. Like, if you have someone like the person that did it the best, I think was JK Rowling, right? The creator of Harry Potter, right? Mm -hmm. She gets paid for everything. You want to put some Harry Potter stickers in a vending machine at Ralph's, she gets paid for that, right? Like all of it. That's the way it should be because she wrote it in her car, homeless. Like it came from her brain. Writers, same things. If they're writing and creating something, how are they not making more money or how is someone else making more money off of that idea because the literal thing we're watching is coming from a person right or from an mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. same thing with artists all of those things it's really frustrating so it's like if you know jason writes a book mm -hmm. there's no way that if that book gets turned into anything that he shouldn't be the person that makes the most money but that's right. not the way the industry works and it's just strange to me it's always been strange to me because it's like at bare minimum that person's compensated now granted i'm fine with other people making money too but that person should be the top tier because the idea right. came from them right. that's what it is and we are in this place where everything feels like it's upside down or based on corporations or big business or money or like the ceo type person or whoever it is at the top making all the money and the people actually creating the art that you see are literally getting drummed out or they look at it as like you should be so lucky to be here right which is i think what jason said earlier yeah. mm -hmm. and that's frustrating is that you can't um, and also, too, I think art suffers, right? So our art is suffering because then artists are under pressure. They're not you, you're taking your first idea versus if you had time to develop it, maybe your fifth or sixth idea that's better, right? So it's a lot of things. A lot of time, um, a lot of the times, even in film now, I find that we're working without even a script. So I'm just like, what's going on in this scene? And they're just like, oh, just draw something cool. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't even know what's going on. Like, what Like, what do you mean? Like, I need to know the story bare minimum or at least have an idea of what's going on in order to create something. But the creation process is also getting kind of out of control. And then when you add in AI and other things that truncate that process, it gets even worse, mm -hmm. right? Now you're going to have a whole generation of people that don't even know how to use that muscle. Like they can't uh, translate reference. They can't come up with a new idea. It's more like just this piecemeal thing. And so I don't know exactly where, where that's going to go, but I have seen on every level right now, people are hurting. And I think if you take it outside of entertainment, just in regular old real life, things are so imbalanced now that people are, you know, freaking out a bit. 
Like, you know, the strike definitely hit us all really hard. Um, it's still not technically over because SAG is striking and then they have to mm-hmm. deal. Like, until it's over, until it's completely over, we're still dealing with it. Um, yeah. And it did make work very difficult. And people, I think people think of it in terms of like when the strike started, but the strike started at the beginning of this year. Work was slow from the beginning because they started to prepare for the strike, which means they weren't green lighting big projects and the capacity that they normally do. Mm-hmm. They were trying to figure out where projects were gonna land, which projects to support, which projects to cancel. Um, so just across the board right now, I kind of don't know where we are in all honesty. I'm not sure where anything is going. I just know that it all feels very upside down. And I think that's why you're seeing all of the industry strike because People are saying like, I'm making a, you know, a good living, like even people making, you know, 80, 100, whatever, they're all making a good wage and still barely making it. And it's mm-hmm. like, and it's just because you look at everything and it's gotten really expensive. Mm-hmm. You know? I remember yeah. a time where you go to Walmart with $200 and come out like kings. Four carts. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you, you had four carts like a locomotive. And you now didn't pay me to pay eight dollars for eggs. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. They were like, "Don't you want eggs? I don't That's want eggs that eggs. bad. I don't. I don't mm-hmm. need eggs that bad." Um, I got. I got a friend of mine who has chickens. I get eggs from her. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone back to the source. <laughs> right. Go. So right back. Go back to the ground. But yeah. I think it was. To it was what Bill said too. Uh, you know, not only marginalized voices, right? Black and black queer, like. We have a, di- in general, humanity has a disempowered relationship with creativity and mm-hmm. our personal gifts. That's mm-hmm. because if we're in touch with our gifts, we're not feeding the machine. Mm-hmm. So there's that. But then the, where you go, women, wh- white women, um, people of color, and, it, and, and any intersectionality, and you just keep keep going down the white supremacy like ladder, Right, because there's the talent. Mm-hmm. Right, right. The more yeah. exploited you, you expect to be, and and when you, that's why I think independent creators, and creators like, you know, Ryan Coogler are creating, and in, in, uh, Jordan Peele, um, and the, uh, uh, and the, um, Donald Glover are creating new levels of expectation, mm-hmm. and Dave Chappelle. We can say no, mm-hmm. and the whole world isn't going to fall apart. Right. We can decide that we don't want to be on social media. We can mm-hmm. we can make that project like get out, and it's going to be huge, even if no one believed in it but me. And so I think that if we could live with more audacity, that like as ourselves, with it when it comes to our creativity, no matter what level we're creating on, whether we're just starting out or whether we're about to ink a deal with Netflix or HBO or Blurred Station. Um, <laughs> then, then I think that you know you will start to see these changes because the strikes that are happening are really indicative of that. We deserve more. I deserve more for myself. I'm no longer going to take what you're willing to give me. I can see that there's something wrong, and it's not working. And right. yeah, and making the, and making the and standing their ground and making them see the error of that way. I'm like, look, no, you need to understand. You wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the creators. You, mm-hmm. you just wouldn't be, like you said, Phil. You wouldn't be there if it wasn't for these creators making these, uh, uh, these shows, these movies, these narratives that bring so many people. They bring millions and millions of people to either theater seats or to the or to their home in front of the television. And the fact that you're just sitting back comfortably. And saying, "Oh, give them this, and then they'll be happy." No, there's no reason why you mm-hmm. should have a hit series or hit, yeah, hit series like Squid Game, and it made like two million, and and the creator got zilch, and then yeah. find out he gets yeah, you you create something like Squid Game that made Netflix buku bucks and got none of it. That part was nuts. See, that that's the same thing. Right. Alice in Borderland. It was the exact same thing. Yeah. Mm. See that was the, that the Squid Game story is interesting to me mm-hmm. because he'd been working on it for so long. I pitched it before. I felt like that was strategic, mm-hmm. and in that maybe that wasn't the thing. Now, see, 
I may not give you Lost Children of Andromeda, but I can go over here and write up some stuff that I'm okay with selling and you make a lot of money off of it. And then I leverage the fact that I was the one that wrote it and then I go get my money the other way. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is like being really precious about is something that is could be a double-edged sword. It could, it, could, yeah. it could help or hinder you, but sometimes you do want to have that thing you can just sell off, like let go to wow. leverage later. Um, and that's just kind of playing the game. I don't know if you agree, Phil, but I agree. Oh, there, it's, it's definitely a chess yeah. game. <laughs> there's a lot of projects. I tell friends this all the time. There's a lot of projects that I see with friends and they'll just be like, they'll hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Right. And they want it. And I'm like, get something, get something out. Even if it's just given like the main thing, but yeah. like everything can't be precious. So it's like this one project that you've worked on for a really long time that you believe in, if it'll sell, that might be the one that you have to like put out there and that'll give you the opportunity to write something else or to mm -hmm. create something else. Um, but if you hold it, it's just sitting there with you. It's not going to go anywhere. Collecting right? dust. Yeah. And I, I realized like this year, more than anything else we've discovered, and a lot of people already know this, but some of us are discovering that Hollywood is not a monolith. They are not the central point of everything. They are not the the mecca of entertainment. No, that's a farce. Um, it was just as evident. I went to San Diego Comic Con, and when you removed Hollywood from it, creators were able to have the floor to connect, interact, and collaborate with other creators and even regular fans who may have resources at hand. It's like, I like your book. I like your comic. I like your art. Let's work it out. And it worked so well because the focus wasn't on big studios and big appearances. It actually allowed conversation to happen, which is where we are right now. Conversation needs to happen. You can't just turn your head because, oh, it's, I'm not going to get what I'm going to get. I'm, I'm not, not getting what I look for for it. Mm -hmm. But you have a door that you can step through and at least get the process started. So you can create that. So you can get that manifested. So when it's time and it comes out even bigger, you're already two steps ahead of the game instead of waiting for someone to, here, I'll hand this to you. Oh, no, no thanks. I'm good. I'm, I'm, already, I'm already full speed ahead. I didn't need you from the beginning. Right. Yeah. The other thing is, too, being here in, in, in Europe um, – and looking at the, um, I love, I love how he just let that roll off his tongue. What he say? No, 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 no. <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. I loved it. I love it. Here in the south of France, yeah. Into European Union, and I am talking to you, Brion, from up here. It felt, it sounded so lovely. But go ahead, Jason. So for independence, and and I think about. I'm not even gonna say where, where I got this from because it's another one of the this is where y'all are gonna <laughs> <laughs> I went to a film festival this year and it was pretty eye-opening to see the way that the U European Union and the companies here treat creativity and the types of projects that they're willing to fund. Not really caring. It's not like there's I don't think there's really such thing as like blockbusters here to where they there's an industry of creating films that go um, to be these blowouts, you know, they're commercial, they're just bringing over stuff that, that we've made. Um, so you see these kind of, you know, these, these very deep emotional story driven films and you see the, the telecom companies and the European Union itself putting money aside to invest in creativity. And I think from some, some countries, they have to invest a percentage of their GDP back into the creative community. So we, you we, see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Never a dull wow. moment over wow. here. Wow. I swear to God. <laughs> coming from inside the house. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 I love you, Jason. I love you, guys. I'm just kidding, dude. It's just fun. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, so I feel like there is opportunities to partner with other places to create. You know, there are people out here. There's, um, there's those virtual studios that are popping up. Um, and you, it's kind of hard to build a company or like, you know, set up a company here, but I, I, there's money here. 
there's money here and they they definitely have money for marginalized voices they they have they have money set aside for for bipoc art um nice. Nice. across the whole spectrum like visual art um painting sculpture film um music and uh literature so i definitely definitely think it's worth just exploring outside of that that kind of that narrow funnel, especially right. if you make make something of your own. Um, just look at the resources that are available. I think it's it's definitely like you said, it's an eye opener. Knowing that, and it's refreshing, knowing that we have BIPOC creators now who are making more strides, are being seen more, and being you know seen more, seeing. Young men that are the age of how old was that young man? I think he was 14 that did the Lego scene in Spider Verse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm just like, I'm like, this is a 14 year old black kid. <laughs> I'm just like, I was, I was blown away. I'm like, 14. I'm like, I'm a grown man and I'm just putting together a set, you know? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, you tell me I could have put this in the movie, you know? So, nah. <laughs> right now <laughs> but knowing that you know that impression is being put on that next generation even in even the current generation mm -hmm. you know knowing that impression is being set there that puts me in a good place that says you know we're being seen now you know now the question is how do we take the next step blur station uh we take the next step and saying this is ours you mm -hmm. can't have this because mm -hmm. because if you take it, you might bastardize it. As a matter of fact, you just will, you know, bastardize it. Or learning that model and mm -hmm. quote unquote exploiting said model, to, you know, so you can get on top. Like you said, Phil, if you have eight eight projects, go ahead and sell a couple of them and make that money, but keep that one that you really want to do mm -hmm. for yourself and and do it for where. It's really going to benefit you. Everybody has to have at least one project where they won't compromise because that's where the art is. Like where you mm -hmm. won't compromise, you don't allow that. someone to come in and change it or whatever it is. But they're the, to play the game, you do have to have the projects that are more toss away in mm -hmm. order to make, build collect, you know, build uh, you know uh, uh, connections and like working with people and all of that. I just think that there there it's a there's a cadence to it and there's a rhythm to it and that's how you kind of have to do it because if you try to hold everything not everyone there's very rare projects that come along where they don't want where people don't want to institute themselves into it or insert themselves into it or change it or allow you to just kind of go off right those projects right. are few and far between where you can really kind of get them through and every time those projects break through they're successful like there'll be some you know a sleeper hit where people are like how did this and it's like it's like of course that was going to do well it's because you kind of left them alone mm -hmm. uh, i think that that's kind of where we need to be um, but it's been difficult to get people to kind of see that and then also to get people to kind of jump and then also to like for me i've been really big on you know with us at 9b we try to partner a lot so we try to partner to say like let's support people or let's try to see if we can find a way to bridge our community together so we're not all working singularly or separately right mm -hmm. so it's like building those power dynamics to where you can actually put something out and structure it like you have the power to do it you might not have all the resources but someone else does but what we're all doing is without realizing it is everyone's using the max amount of resources they have and going in this direction and it's like but you could combine with like these two other people be even more powerful right like so it's mm -hmm. like that way, and then you can get stuff out. I think I modeled a lot of that off of Jim Henson and the way he started kind of his company, which was he did commercials, he did all this stuff, but he had a group of core friends that all had different skill sets and they all combined together to work on each other. I you work on each other's ideas, right? So it'd be like, okay, Susan's got this idea for whatever, let's all work towards that. I can camera, I can do this, I can do that, you can do this, right? So they combine, and then as soon as Susan's idea gets off the ground, then they go and do another one. They're like, okay, Jim's got this puppet idea. Okay, let's try that. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's that thing. And then before long, you have something. 
Um, and a lot of minority families and people of color do that same thing when they come here, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll have like Asian families will come here, they all are together in one place and they say, okay, you know, the Kim family wants to open a bank and so we'll all work together to help them open that bank. Then once the bank gets going, they're like, you know, the Chu family wants to open a restaurant. So then they all put their resource, like it's that, it's trying to get it all together. And I feel like right now, if we could just focus, we're all, you have a lot of successful, if I'm just talking about black people, you have a lot of successful black people, but we're all spread out, right? So right. we're in different parts of the industry, or you'll find, you can always go to a website and you'll see a fancy company and there's at least one or two black people in there, but they're fine. Yeah right? Like, that's the way that it is. But they might feel isolated or feel like they can't bring people in. But then right next to them, there's another company that looks the exact same. So at mm -hmm. some point, it's like, how do we get those people that feel isolated, but at the top of their game to work together? Mm -hmm. that, that's the that missing part. point. That's the mm -hmm. missing piece. That part. Uh, this conversation, I love having these type of conversations, by the way because it's it's eye opening for our viewers it's eye opening for the listeners mm -hmm. and it puts a fresh perspective you know because there's always there's always someone who's like oh i didn't know that mm -hmm. or i would like to see this project or i would like to read that book or i will you know and i'm glad to be in a space where i can help garner those relationships build those bridges build those relationships you know, and 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 literally sit back, like in, in the case of Phil, sit back and we're like, yo, hey, I know that dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, so, but it but it feels good knowing that we're in those spaces and we're making differences as well and in inspiring other people, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it just it just does it does me proud, you know what I mean? And so uh, but before we close out, Ooh. I want to thank you. Yeah, I, hey, I gotta keep it under two hours. We gotta, we gotta be professional. Um, <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, we try. Uh, we try. I <laughs> want to thank Jason, Michael Primrose. You want to go, go? You want to go get that project? Tell him, Obi. Tell him, Obi. You want to go? Get that, <laughs> you want to go get his new project, The Arrival? It's up now, uh, or it goes live tomorrow. Correct? Mm -hmm. it goes yeah. live tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, my man is over in Portugal. Ain't that something? <laughs> tell tell the people where they can find you at man. Um, you can follow me at, at Jason Michael Primrose uh, uh, or or at Lost Children of Andromeda. I've been doing both my posts um, there, and um, yeah. Also, I'm working on a poetry book of uh, that's kind of chronicles like creativity and then my black experience during the pandemic. So that'll be out next year. So that's gonna be. It's gonna be intense. A lot of performance, a lot of live spoken word, and everything like that. Um, so I'm excited about that. But yeah, get the arrival. It's gonna be on Zoop. Um, three different covers. We have Kanan White cover, Ian Sagash, who's, who's a new creator, who is really incredible. He did the color cover that you see on there. I haven't I haven't released the Kanan White cover yet. <laughs> um, and then we have the original kind of movie style poster that we did, um, and. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. But this is one of this is one of many. This is the first comic we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep building these comic book narratives uh, around the different characters um, and the story. And then, yeah, and then get 2050Z if you haven't read it already. You yes. can get a limited edition version in the Kickstarter. We did a new red cover. Um, it's like real intense. Um, so I'm excited about yeah, that. That novel is amazing. <laughs> Dang, I should wait. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Jason, you already know this door is always open. Uh, you can always come. Just hit me up. Just it's funny when it's funny when when your people hit me up and it was like, so Jason Micro Primrose is a writer. I'm like, we know Jason. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Here's the link. Say less. Uh, so, but thanks for coming through, my guy. Uh, always door door always open. Uh, next time we have a plate of food, according to Spartan, we. we <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to thank this special guest, Phil, Phil Boutte Jr. of 9B Collective. He's stopping through, uh, showing some love and support. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you, man. 
Uh, on Instagram, I am Phil, P-H-I-L underscore Boutte, uh, B-O-U-T-T-E. Yes, my last name is Boutte. If it's not funny, you're not saying it right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's probably the easiest way to remember it. Uh, and then I have uh, 9B Collective or the, the number 9B Collective um, uh, or at 9B Collective. Thank you. That's there. Um, and then I also want to encourage everybody also to go and check out Jason's work. And I will be posting links to your Kickstarter and making sure that we show support in that way. Um, uh, because you guys should all just be supporting independent artists. Um, yes, that, that. Yeah. Like, so let's everybody, let's work together and make sure that that's a success. <laughs> Absolutely. Woo, thank we you. definitely got to have the entire crew of 9B Collective on because they, when I say their hands is in everything, man. <laughs> I, 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 I'm waiting for another all stop moment. Just, I, I was just like, I'm like, wait, all stop moments coming. <laughs> Screech and break. I literally, that's I literally, I literally told, lady, I told Lady Mandalore, I'm like, they've done everything I've watched. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we we have a good time. We do yeah, have a good. We, we do. Time. We definitely uh, do. There's a lot of there's a lot of things still coming up and a lot of things going. I think everybody just needs to. I think in the spirit of this conversation, it's about supporting each other. Mm-hmm. I think that right now we definitely need that as independent artists, but just as artists in general, like right. um, with the, with the onslaught of AI and everything else is really changing how we work. Um, it's going to be really important to see everybody kind of banding together and things together um, as opposed to letting it splinter us further because um, exactly. it's, it's definitely not over. Um, I also just want to make a plug for everyone that has been watching to understand that although there are AI provisions in place that the writers and everybody have been fighting for, visual AI is still very much so a problem. Um, mm-hmm. So it's something that be kind of addressed and thought about in terms of protections from it, how it's going to be used, how it's not going to be exploitative, all of those things. Um, there's still that needs to be worked out. So I just want to kind of call that out while I have you know the time to do so. Um, so just make sure you're paying attention to it because as far as like writing things, they're like, oh, I can't write this or I can't direct this or I can't do that. But no one's really paying attention to visual AI. Like yeah. Are we still going to allow it to start designing? Are we going to allow it to start doing the work that we're doing? It's that type of deal. Um, so just calling that out um, and make sure that you're showing support for artists because they really need it. Right. Mm-hmm. Appreciate yeah. it, guy. Thank you guys for having me. Always. <laughs> Door always open. Black Spartan and Obi into in, yeah. in the wings. Obi is always somewhere, but <laughs> uh, the youngest always forehead. Got me yes. somewhere. What can you say? The youngest forehead in the bunch. <laughs> the youngest forehead in the what? <laughs> But yes, oh uh, I can be found Blackbox four four seven on all social. Do reviews on just about everything. Um, podcast, you know how the freck got here every Wednesday and Saturday. Of course, video game podcast get bit every Friday. Podcast can be found wherever you get your podcast from or see them. Also, blurredseyeview.org, where I write wrestling because wrestling is real. People are fake, especially with Jay Gargill going to WWE. Oh. Oh. It is going to be interesting because Vince is still there. We know how he feel about black women. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> also, guys, uh, again, we've been preaching this all night. Word of mouth is powerful. If you know someone that is starting a uh, starting something new, a con, a book, movie, anything of that nature, please, please, oh, please, like, share, Comment, spread the word. We can beat the algorithm by word of mouth alone if everybody joins in. Also, con season again, three very quick rules. Respect the cosplayers at all costs. You do not want to run into a guy like me because I'm pretty much the security. Number two, wash your ass as much as soap and water. <laughs> Those things are still available. Wash your ass. And number three, the same rule as I apply to cons is apply to myself. Simply put, be kind, be polite, do not be a dick, and we'll all be cool. <laughs> that number two and number one, they should be switched around. Uh, <laughs> leave it just like it is. Leave it just like it is. If they broke. Don't fix it. Ain't that right, right Obi? He's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Obi is fascinating with a sock right now. Irish Spring does wonders. <laughs> it's always a first impression. Uh... <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, blurs of all ages, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Once again, it's your Frosted Beard of Blurred Coin here with the crew of all crews, Blurred's Eye View. We got the fantastic people popping up in here. We got Jason doing a thing, and we got Phil doing a thing, 
If you ain't doing, if you ain't saying his name right, just just leave the room. Just leave. <laughs> there's no hope for y'all. There's no hope for y'all. It's, it's you know what's funny about Phil's last name is that I knew how to pronounce it thanks to Buckaroo Bonsai. <laughs> wow. I I seen it. I'm like, God. I know how to say that. You know, <laughs> it's like that's a there, proud moment for me. There's been a few people mean. that have gotten it from Saved by the Bell too. If you used to watch that, remember <laughs> Mister Looney. Where they'd be like, Mr. Looney, and he'd be like, it's Lune. Like, the same <laughs> Mr. Looney, and I'm like, it's Boutte. You know, like, oh, it's, wow. like it makes a difference. <laughs> Please. You can find me on Instagram and X under Navy Montel, the one and only name, but you can find me on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok under Rogue Catnip. I am here with the crew. I have two rules as always. Be respectful and be yourself. Basement virgins, also known as gatekeepers, stay away from me, and I won't embarrass you. Cool, cool. That's it. Oh, uh, my goodness. It's been a show, and it's always been a great show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you to our guests, Jason Michael Primrose. Go hit him up. Go get that. Go jump on that link. Get 2050Z. Get Zosma. Get Lost Children of Andromeda. Get all these projects, including the arrival. The pre launch is tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Phil, for jumping in and uh, joining in on the conversation. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thank you everybody who's watching out there on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. You'll see dope conversations such as this, shorts, interviews you won't see anywhere else, and so much more. Uh, remember to educate yourself and others, entertain yourself and others, and most of all, encourage yourself and others. But you can always follow us on Blurred's Eye View. You can follow us on IG. You'll go to the link tree in the bio, and it will show you to all the places you can find us. But until then, we will see you guys Thursday. Hmm. And until then, thank you. Thanks, Trey. <laughs> thanks, Trey. Um, until then, we're out of here. See you guys Thursday at 8 p.m.